right, uh, good evening, and welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. My name is Vincent... Br oh, wait, nope, my name is Mike, and I'm the host of the show. Thanks for checking out another episode. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everyone is doing good. And as I say all the time, we have another jam-packed episode tonight, so why don't we dive right the fuck on in. And just a reminder, as always, you can find us on several online varying places, the first of which is our website, which I realized this week that we need to uh, update with Matt's information. Uh, that's ahpod.com, A-H-H-P-O-D.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, just search for America's Hometown Horror or at Hometown Horror or Hometown Horror Pod. You'll find us on some sort of place uh, in all of those platforms. And you can also shoot us an email at hometownhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. And also a reminder that we're now a part of horrorfacts.com, which is a great resource. If you are a horror fan, just go to horrorfacts.com, which is actually called Horror Facts Magazine. It is a great resource if you're a horror fan for news, reviews, and podcasts just like ours. So horrorfacts.com is an awesome resource that you need to check out if you're a horror fan. And yeah... At risk of uh, not repeating myself anymore, I should introduce my co-hosts, and uh, we have a packed house again tonight. I'm joined by Matt, Cat, and Andrew. Lady, gentlemen, what's what's the haps? What's going on? Hello. Hi. Hi. What's I'm taking what's a picture up? to put on my Instagram story. Oh, there we go. Nice. <laughs> it's just Andrew itching his eye. And oh, there we go. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, awesome. Andrew just itching his eye. Excellent. It's so itchy today. I can't I just stop. remembered that Excellent. I forgot. No. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Sorry that you forgot your snacks, but that's okay. Uh, guys, did we have a good time last week discussing the future of horror? Or should I say going back to the future of yes. horror? I mean, yes. let's be real. It was pretty awesome. It was yeah, it was a good awesome. talk. Yeah, let's be real. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Notice. Andrew actually listened back to that episode, and I think you were a little, uh, you were like, at the end, you were like, oh my god. Yeah, this is why he doesn't listen back to episodes. <laughs> uh, no, it was, most of it was enjoyable. I mean, most of it was me just yelling at you guys about stuff and saying, you know, No, not was, yelling. You're wrong. You're wrong. Just wrong. yelling to <laughs> us about Marvel. Yeah. Well, just in fairness, Marvel us. sucks. <laughs> well, I don't know if I got that impression that you think Marvel sucks from listening back to that episode. And huh? Hulu's awesome. I, uh, uh, Hulu's great, right? <laughs> Hulu's the best. <laughs> All right, so due to technical difficulties, I'm not sure where it actually cut off there before, but it uh, seems like everybody had a good time recording last week's episode going back to the future of horror. Um, but with that being said, we actually uh, did throw out a poll on our Instagram page before we recorded that episode. And uh, stupid uh, Instagram, I almost said stupid Facebook, but it's essentially the same entity because they're both owned by uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Right. And uh, I did not get notifications uh, with some of the questions. We actually didn't think we got any questions, but it turns out that we did. We did. And uh, I didn't see the notifications until after the fact. So we had a couple of leftover questions, some of which are directed at each of you guys individually. Why don't we run through these really quick? Okay. All right. Did I get one? Uh, you actually did get it's like a one. Candy cane. Yeah, like did. Candy yeah. Candy How about that? I think they asked what your favorite color yeah. gummy bear was. So, um, <laughs> so I, have to go with red. I should, I should preface <laughs> that we, uh, we did get a few different questions from our buddy, uh, J Bone McLaughlin, Dr. Yeah. Sleep on, uh, Dr. S Dr. Sleep 1317 on Instagram, I should say, sent us a few different questions to chew on. And the first question, does Matt prefer extra or big league chew? Uh, big League Chew. It's <laughs> a random question. I like it. That's I my buddy it. Justin McLaughlin. He loves yes. the show. Big supporter of yeah, the show. Like I've talked to him. Qu I've actually right. talked to him quite a bit on Instagram. No, but I've Long never. Time. Are we going to have him on for an Never episode? met him in person. Still People to this day. The stairs? Isn't that the one he wanted? Uh, no, that was Jay. Uh, oh, Shauna's cousin Jay. Jay. Oh, we just okay. never we never had a chance to get him on yet. But um, I know he had been talking to me about the thing. But we already covered the thing a while back. So unfortunately. Uh, we have to get him on for something else. Maybe we can do a special effects uh, special. Oh. effects oh, that'd special. Be cool. That'd be fun. Where that'd we get to at least still talk about yeah. something. Yeah. So big league chew for Matt. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Another question from uh, Jay Bone. Let's see. Uh, any horror novels that you would like to see adapted on the big screen? Um, I do have a couple of uh, answers here. I know you uh, probably have some as well. You two don't read. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Oh, so do you know anything off the cuff, Matt, that you... Uh, um, I just have to make sure I have the guy's name correct. I'm pretty sure it's Eric LaRocca. Eric but, LaRocca? So okay. the way the book is played out is a little different. I'll name it in a second. But it, go, it goes through a series of uh, basically like confiscated email exchange. Mm -hmm. But it's called Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. 
Um, really interesting, really short, really fucking dark and disturbing. Crazy, crazy, crazy story. Uh, I, I actually listened to this on an audiobook uh, over about four days to and from work. So I would say that that's about uh, 240 minutes, so however many hours that would be. Okay. Um, Andrew, I think you would like I would this. actually, and it's a short. Yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, so what, even the audiobook, it was... Yeah, that seems pretty... What's that, A week's hours? worth of 40-minute rides to and from. Yeah, four hours. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, four hours. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like double-checked that. I was like, math? But basically, this girl, <laughs> she puts up this blog trying to sell an antique piece of her uh, grandmother's, like, silverware. It's like an apple cutter. And basically, a girl reaches out to her, and kind of, they go back and forth over the the value of it and this and the other thing and through this they kind of develop this online relationship this also takes place back in like the early 2000s okay and um it just kind of progresses from this like online relationship where they start to get kind of acquainted and then feelings with each other and then one becomes very dominant over the other forcing them to kind of leave their comfort zone in their own life and come and report back. And it really takes an incredibly bizarre and twisted left turn. Um, so I do think that this could be at least portrayed as like a creep show episode kind of thing where nice. I don't know if it has a feature length kind of deal, but it definitely has a story that could play out and would be fucking wild. Okay. So uh, that would be my pick for you, Justin. Uh, and it is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. Eric LaRocca. Yeah. Okay. I believe that came out in 2021, maybe late 2020. Okay. All right. So I have a couple of answers here for you, Justin, that I'm going to rip through really quick. Um, probably one of the coolest novels that I have read over the last year or so. This is by a guy who is an up-and-coming name... Uh, in the horror uh, fiction field, Stephen Graham Jones. You may have heard of him before. Um, I think he's contributed to Fangoria, but he's written a bunch of novels. And so his most hard as a uh, yes, yeah. same guy. Um, but he also wrote a book called The Only Good Indians, yep. which was awesome. And I think they have either been trying to make it into a movie or something else, and they haven't had any success yet. But it's very good. It's actually still pretty recent. It came out a couple of years ago. Um, basically this story is about a group of four Native American friends that all grew up together on a reservation, grew apart later in life uh, after this traumatic event happened to them on the reservation, and slowly they get drawn back together when certain weird things start to happen to group uh, friends in their group. I remember reading about this yep. one briefly. And it's, um, is that kind of like Yellow Jackets? In a weird way? Um, it does have kind of some Yellow Jacket vibes. It, it takes place across two different time periods. Yeah. Very similar to Yellow Jackets mm -hmm. in that sense. And they have a traumatic Um, thing. I would say this could kind of be like a light spoiler. Um, yeah, but it, it, you're right. It does deal with like some PTSD type yeah. stuff. Uh, it almost has some vibes of like Antlers. If you've seen that movie and you know what creature is kind of being dealt with. In that particular film, oh. it may be something similar to that. That makes that is a traditional like Native yep, American, Native yeah. American yeah. creature, yeah. and it's pretty cool. So that one's Sounds called the, the Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. And I'll also I'll give you two more quick bonus ones. I did mention this particular one a couple of weeks ago. I did recently finish the audiobook version of uh, it's called Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, which is essentially a horror comedy uh, ghost story that takes place overnight in a knockoff Ikea store where they're employees. <laughs> yeah. um, I think they're trying to make that into a series or a movie, and it would make for just such a cool, you know, uh, takedown of, like, Ikea and that whole culture. I think that would be great. And Grady Hendrix, another name to pay attention to, Kat, he has a novel that came out very recently that I think you... You're not going to read it, but you would be very interested in seeing the movie or TV version of it. Is it long? It's called The Final Girl Survival Group. Okay, cool. Yeah, this and is, great this is a... I haven't read it yet, but I've heard the concept, and it's very interesting. Now, I don't know if they'd be able to adapt this because a lot of the rights issues, they might run into some issues there. But essentially, it is a girl who survived uh, the attacks of a, of a masked killer, and she goes to this survival group where there are survivors of... Uh, a babysitter murderer on Halloween night. Okay. A uh, a 
killer that wore a ghost faced mat a ghost face so like mask. Final girls anonymous. Kind of. uh, a guy that wore a hockey mask with a machete. Yeah. And somebody that wore uh, knives on their hands. Now I don't think they're ever specifically named as Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, you know, leather ghost, fa- face. Uh, ghost face, and you know whoever else. But it's alluded to that these are the same stories, and she's take she's like living in this universe with those people, and they slowly start to get attacked by a new killer, while you know essentially going to meetings at this horror girl survival group. Cool. Uh, so I actually I have I've I have that, that audiobook purchased. I have not listened to it yet. But I think the concept alone is extremely interesting, and that would work very well Absolutely. for. Uh, yeah, for is him. one of the uh, survivors a survivor of like a specific man uh, from Phantasm. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't gotten that far into it yet. Woo! <laughs> but I guess we shall see. Uh, one last question from Justin. Uh, there are a lot of space horror games coming up. Would you like to see more space horror games on film? So I'll tackle this one first. And, I don't know if any of you guys are big video game players. I don't think I have enough to bring right. to the table for this one. So I'll, I'll say that I play some horror games, some video games, not a ton. By the way, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, fucking dope game. <laughs> Just start playing that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. um, but I think the obvious answer here, Justin, is going to be Dead Space. Uh, that's probably one of the scariest that, yeah. space horror games ever made, and they've never turned it into a uh, movie. I think that would make for a great one. I also have played multiple times uh, Alien Isolation, which is a fantastic survival horror game. Um, I doubt they'll ever turn it into a movie, but it would make for a great movie. And uh, while not a space movie, and actually I think this is kind of cheating because it has been announced that Netflix may be developing something based on this, I would love to see a movie based on the Bioshock video game series Mm. uh, because there's a lot of scary stuff in there, some really cool stuff. So I'd say uh, Dead Space... Uh, Alien Isolation or Bioshock would be my picks for video game adaptations. Mr. J-Bone McLaughlin. So, let's see. Then I forgot that I wrote back to this thing. Good evening. So that's not a question. Uh, Kat, you have a question from SchleeDB. Oh, boy. How you like me now? (laughs) That's a good question. So how you like like her now? I like her just fine. Okay. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, we, also a, we also had a question from my buddy Mike Vieira, who I used to work with at Verizon. Uh, thank you, Mike, for listening to the show and always giving us feedback. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, he asked, probably before he listened to the episode, what our least liked subgenre of horror was. For example, slashers, monsters, etc. I don't know if we explicitly tackled this topic or did, not. Yeah. Andrew or Kat, you guys want to tackle this one first? Mine's slashers. I was going to say, but I love slashers, so I wouldn't say slashers. I'd well, say no, monsters. You, well, you can have a different answer. I can have my answer. own answer, and you can oh, have your own answer. I thought that yeah. this was like, a, okay. Uh, <laughs> aliens. You just said you don't like monster <laughs> movies. Aliens and monster movies? Boo. Like, Boo. Yeah, aliens and monster I don't like Walshie's worms. They're gross. Right. Ooh, fair like, enough. <laughs> Sounds like Matt? a personal problem. Uh, found footage. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yeah, Hot I'm not take. big on found footage. I think I'm with you on that too. That would be my second. I thought I mean, you were going to say. I think you were going to say remakes or legacy sequels. Well, I sure. guess that. I mean, yeah, but I mean, in turn, I don't really count those as a subgenre. Yeah. I just count those as a remake. But that's true. It, yeah, I guess remakes, legacy, yeah. But yeah. definitely, if I had to go for like a just a full blown subgenre that's original mm. content, um, yeah, found footage. Like it's there's a handful that work, and then there's just so many that are so there's fucking a, there's bad. There's a lot of trash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, I also feel like slashers would be an, an easy answer for me, um, so I'm going to go a little different here, and I am going to say I am so beyond sick of the zombie genre of horror. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Just, I'm, I haven't seen a really, really, really good zombie movie in a while, and you know this goes back to what you were saying last week on the show, Cat, about The Walking Dead just sucking the fun set, yeah. out that of was the a good zombie call. genre. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great call, actually. We had a lot of good calls last week, mm-hmm. but I think that might have been one of the better ones. I want to ask you a question based on your answer right there. Sure. Now, with that being said, does that affect how you feel watching the original Romero movie? No, okay. no, because those are classics, and those set the bar high for the zombie genre. I just feel like he did those movies so well that there's a, a lot of what has been done. So those won't get old. Like, no, like no, no, Shaun no, of the God, Dead, no. maybe? Shaun of the Shaun Dead of the Dead's a classic. Too. Even the Shaun Dawn of the Dead, Dead remake. Um, Zombieland. The, uh, Zombieland was even good. Zombieland was enjoyable. Yeah. Zombieland was good. I like Zombieland. Can we talk about Zombieland sometime? At some point. Certainly yeah, can. Yeah, why not? We talked about Hocus we certainly Pocus. Can. Oh. All right, so <laughs> there we go. And then we have one final question. This one should be quick. This one's from uh, Realtor underscore Tiso. 
How did Matt Audette get so sexy? <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> Matt Tisa. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. I don't know, man. I, I, I just do everything I can what's, to replicate what Matt Tisa does. What's your secret, dude? Yeah. What's your secret? I All just right. try to look like Matt Tisa. <laughs> uh, Wait, so there was no gummy bear question? No. No, there was no gummy bear question. Sorry. You answered well, it, though. Teaser. You did say red. Red, yeah. yeah. Well, that takes care of all the questions that we had left over from last week. So thank you to Justin. Thank you to Schlee. Thank you to Matt. And thank you to Mike for sending those questions in. Sorry we missed them initially. And just a reminder, hey, I mean, you guys can send us any questions anytime yeah. you want. Yeah. You can email them to us, send us yeah. DMs, whatever you guys want to do. Cause I, we, look, uh, I look forward to getting some, yeah, some, some good some content cool stuff to, to talk about. Yeah. So. yeah, and uh, there were a few people that I didn't get questions from that I was pretty disappointed in. I'm, you guys know who you are. I'm disappointed in you guys. So send some questions to make up for it. So. Is he talking to me? No, anytime not you. you. Anytime no, you no, see no. a post. I'm not talking yes. about the yes. host yes. of the yes. show. Yes. <laughs> anytime you see a post, whether it's, it's a live post or on a story or something, just send a direct message or comment. Just... Seriously, yeah. For sure. What do you want to know? Yep, absolutely. We can do our best to answer it. Might not have a good answer. Or you might even not like opinion, our answers. We'll have an answer, though. Yeah, yeah, we will have an answer. We'll Definitely try to have an answer. opinion. Yep. Andrew will always have an opinion. <laughs> yeah. All right, so a couple quick news items real quick, and then we'll jump into watch list and then tonight's movie. But I feel like we're burying the lead here, and uh, this is a big piece of news, something that we found out a couple days ago here, and I am very happy to announce that um, all of us now here at America's Hometown Horror Podcast are officially ambassadors of fangoria yes holy shit yeah this um, is fun Hooray! i feel like saying that sentence out loud <laughs> still makes it it's it doesn't feel real to but um essentially uh we were contacted by fangoria we applied for something and uh we're officially now ambassadors of fangoria so uh, yeah. i mean maybe you're an ambassador i'm more like a cabinet member <laughs> okay know fair really enough <laughs> okay fair <laughs> enough <laughs> we sit at the same table <laughs> that's true though. yeah that is correct we do Can sit I at the same table the judge? you like certainly uh, judge judge, <laughs> judge yes. jury and that's executioner can. Yeah. um so you may be asking yourself dear listener what does it all mean, Basil? And what I can tell you from my understanding is that, well, it means that we are essentially, even though I hate the fucking term, I guess, influers? Influ- influers? In, what are we? Influencers? Influenza. For Fangoria? For oh, Fango? Do we get, do we get checkers? Uh, no, I don't think. That, we're uh, not I like, we're not, we're not like Instagram. Uh, official. Not verified. Like that. That's not getting yeah. crazy. Um, okay. But basically, so you may see some posts on our feed um, in the future with us rocking some awesome Fangoria gear or promoting some Fangoria stuff. Um, and basically because we're promoting their brand. And then we'll be sharing all this info on all of our social media pages. So check Twitter, check Facebook, check Instagram mostly. Uh, but we wanted all of you that are listening to the show to hear this first from us. Um, so basically, if you're a fan of Fangoria, which is one of the biggest names in horror since the magazine first came out in the what I would the, say it's yeah, 1979 the, the it's biggest a, the biggest yeah um, well if anyway if you if you want to buy some Fangoria swag here's where you can go you can go to shop.fangoria.com slash hometown horror pod that's right we have our own link on Fangoria's merchandise website and if you can use the promo code one word hometown horror pod and you get 20% off your order. Now, that applies to merchandise and any first-time magazine subscription. So if you're looking to subscribe to Fangoria, which comes out quarterly, I'm a subscriber. Uh, Matt has been a subscriber before. It's awesome content. Still, am. still am. Yep. sorry. I don't know if you still were or not. Yep. Um, it's, an, it's awesome content. You can't find it online. Really, really cool stuff. Awesome interviews. Awesome behind-the-scenes stuff. And you get 20% off that year subscription. Mm-hmm. You get four issues per year. Basically three issues and a free one. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah, I'm still kind of dumbfounded by this one, but yeah, we are officially ambassadors for Fangoria. Woo-hoo! Guys, thoughts? <laughs> I am I was stoked hearing the news. I was very excited. Um, I'm glad to be able to give the homies some, uh, some love, and then they can maybe dip their feet into something that they have been kind of on the fence about, and maybe this discount might help persuade them a little bit for sure and uh the cool thing about fangoria is is that these magazines have content that you are not going to get anywhere else online on any other of the uh there's a lot of fantastic horror sources but they don't have what's in these magazines they're 100 pages they're beautifully well made and they hold up nice they're not flimsy these are like little books um Dude, and even just like the paper stock they use for these yeah, magazines, it's, it's legit. Like, it's like a graphic novel. It's, it is. It's very it's nice. Like yeah. a very well done graphic yep. novel. Yep. 
And um, so just for example, so for the movie that we're going to be talking about tonight, which we'll get into a little bit more later, uh, Matt and I were talking about this before. There was an exclusive interview with the director of this movie by another very popular horror director uh, that you can't find anywhere else, which did shed some interesting light on this particular movie. So Mm -hmm. I'll even take it one step further. Hey, if you go to that link, if you use that promo code and you order stuff from Fangoria... You post it on Instagram, whatever, tag us in it. Let us know yeah. that you purchased some stuff using our promo code, because that'd be pretty fucking rad. I'm not going to lie. So, oh, yeah. yeah. They have great merch, great shirts. Yeah, cool t-shirts. Awesome cool coffee stuff. mugs, little things yeah. like that, little yeah. trinkets, bumper stickers, Teachings. everything you could get. Yeah. So, yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm looking to get a five-panel hat. I think that's my next purchase. What's Hell a yeah, five-panel hat? It's a hat that has five panels. Like, instead of, like, this is, like, They're all different. Two. Yeah, it's, like, oh. one big one, and then, like, so it's just... Kind of cool. looks like a trucker hat, almost, That's but sick. it's a little more. Cool. It's a little, I like it. Yeah, it's different. I need one. Hell yeah, buddy. Hell yeah. So yeah, Fangoria, Fangoria rocks, and uh, go to the Fangoria shop and use our promo code Hometown Horror Pod. Wow. Yes. Still, still feels so weird coming out of my mouth. Uh, one more thing, real quick, or two more things, really quick. So we found out officially that the Monsters Rob Zombie movie is going to be coming to Netflix exclusively in October. Nice. Yep. Which is surprising. I thought that would be coming to Peacock. For sure. I Knock. thought that that's what it... Either way, whatever. Yeah. So, still going to watch it. Looks pretty interesting. Rob Zombie, interesting choice for the uh, for the movie. And probably the most important thing, uh, Nope. Coming to theaters. <laughs> we seen that... This uh, Friday. We seen that Friday night. Can we we got to we we figure can, out when we're going to see it. I have a plan I'm already to see it Saturday night. Yeah. And we're going to cover it next week on the show, obviously, because mm-hmm. that's... Uh, I'd say probably the biggest horror this movie release of the most year. exciting... Yeah. 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 This is... I think yeah. so, too. I did a great thing today. Uh, the first social media reactions for the movie dropped online today. I, didn't look I avoided them either. completely. Wow, yep. good job. I'm not looking at them. How I'm not reading you? reviews. What did you say? Did you say nope? And you I said <laughs> nope, 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 nope. All right, cool. So with that being said, why don't we run through what we watched, and then let's talk about this movie. Andrew, you want to go first? I feel like I kind of should, because um, I watched a movie, and Very proud of you. hopefully this doesn't affect our uh, relationship with Fangoria. But I watched. I, no, no, no. I, so, I, I, so I watched Here this movie. Here we go. So I watched this movie. Self sabotage. Uh, Nineteen. I, unbeknownst to me, it, it was. It came out in I think nineteen ninety. It was called Mind Warp. Nineteen ninety two. Ever see that movie? Mind Warp. It was one of the. So it turns out it's one of the three movies that Fangoria produced when they were a film company. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was like, well, that's interesting. And now I kind of know why they only made three movies because it was pretty much trash like it was a <laughs> straight to VHS movie yeah. it was bad but well I, I watched it had because, boy I, because it, it had Bruce Campbell oh. Angus Scrim it can't be I was that like, bad dude it wasn't great it was a good that's concept a, for that's a, a Halloween night crushing beers movie it was It was a movie that like if you're just got nothing better to do actually I feel like if you were drunk watching this movie it would probably be pretty awesome yeah and, uh, yeah, Angus Scrim and Bruce Campbell it's like took place in 2037 Groovy. like post apocalyptic world where everyone's kind of like there's people that are just plugged in to like a virtual reality universe and one of these one of the girls that's plugged in she interferes their people virtual reality life like it's her mom so she gets outcast like at zones it's just weird and it's it could have been like if that movie maybe had like some semblance of a budget behind it or just something in general a good idea for a movie but it was i mean what did i expect watching a, <laughs> a movie called mind warp that was straight to vhs where'd you find it where was it on uh, amazon prime oh, okay. okay all right yeah I Sounds saw it, and I saw Bruce Campbell, Angus Grimm. I was like, well, I gotta watch this. <laughs> Boy. But, yeah, one of the three movies. I don't, I, I'm curious if you guys have ever seen the other movies that Fangoria uh, Films had. So they did me a one moment. Let's see. It wasn't very long. So they did 1991 Children of the Night. Nope. And then Severed Ties in the two. I've heard of Severed Ties. I haven't seen either of them. So they wanted to release one a year. Didn't happen. That's okay. Well, Fangoria, I believe, like they were, they were, it was such a big thing, and then like the '90s horror in general just kind of, yeah, took a little dip. Yeah, it was so, it was just so high in the '80s that where else are you gonna go? Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting that I was like, oh, we're we're, we're coming back. Movie that I they were, they were ahead of their time, and people yeah. weren't ready for it. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So like in back, like in back to the future. Yeah, to oh, you guys aren't ready. That's for why that. I got you guys all the old issues. I got that lot of like old issues. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. That's Anything all. else? Yeah, that's it. All right. Mr. Audet? I have a one and done as well, but it is four hours of content. I did rewatch uh, In Search of Darkness. Oh, nice. boy. The, uh, <laughs> nice. Dude, honestly, it's kind of, like, become something that I just kind of, like, throw on, like, background. I've seen it a few times, both of them, and it's so long 
that like I can watch it for an hour and a half while I'm like hanging out playing with Layla and then I can come back to it for another hour and a half like three days in a row. You know what I mean? So uh, Sarah actually really enjoys watching it too because she thinks it's very interesting and she finds a lot of substance that she doesn't necessarily pick up from the movies and just she's like I, I appreciate it more. She's like and this is how I can kind of like talk to you about these movies because I can understand what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that that was sweet. <laughs> awesome. But, uh, dude, that if you guys have not seen In Search of Darkness uh, and Part 2 and you're a horror fan, do yourself a favor. Next time you have, like, a good day off where you know you're just going to veg out and you're going to fucking do nothing, watch these, at least one of these documentaries. They are literally, like, I think they're, like, four, three and a half, four hours long. But it goes all through 80s horror in depth year by year, category by category, and it is absolutely the best horror documentary thing that has ever happened since the 100 scariest movie moments. My like, man. My man. Geez, dude. <laughs> well, it, this is very much like that. Yeah, it's, so it's similar. It's very similar. It's, yeah. it's just a monster amount of content, and it's just so fucking awesome. It's so enjoyable. Even if you, like, just the the... the the caliber of people they have talking about these everybody movies. it's unbelievable yeah. like the talent that they bring in so it, it's impressive people it's very like in, in like when they when the names flash across the body you might not know who somebody is just looking at them but you'll see oh okay that's the owner of fright rags yeah that's so and so from such and such that's chief oh, editor that's, of that's john carpenter Fangoria. yep yeah. that's yep that's the former editor of Fangoria. Yeah. that's yep like it's it's very cool stuff and if you like learning about how 80s horror movies were made mm-hmm. and behind the, the scenes impact stuff they had very very cool yeah, awesome stuff it's a super yeah. super awesome documentary it is exclusively on shutter but if you i imagine if you want to try i know people are dvd and blu-ray people mm-hmm. um and just that, that's awesome i'm trying to build my collection back up a little bit but i do have both of them on uh, blu-ray but Sweet. i know they're not easy to get unless you pre-order them they might be a pretty penny but if you're into doing that kind of thing spending the money on it it is so fucking worth it so right. i highly recommend that is in search of darkness part one and two in search of darkness very good darkness. stuff very oh, good stuff God. Kat, you want to talk to me about the first uh, couple episodes of what we do in the shadows season no, four I have something else that i watched by myself oh by my day yes by what did you watch because yes, you know Demo. thursday nights when you work yeah I sit alone and watch scary things by Hell myself. Yeah. <laughs> what did you watch this time? I watched a little series on Netflix. Oh god, I forgot about this. Boo bitch. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Boo bitch. So <laughs> I forgot you were watching Boo Bitch. I watched yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> Tell us about Boo Bitch. It's a series, it's like I don't know, like eight episodes or something. Um it's kinda like a take on mean girls, but it starts out with these two like dorky girls who are in their senior year, and they come back from, like, a party in the opening thing, and they realize that one of them is dead underneath it. Oh, shit. So then they spend... They think it's one of... They they think they know who it is. Like an animal fell on it? Like an animal, like... So they were walking home... Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of... Don't spoil it. I won't it. spoil it, but because I'll Because it's like say, a new show? It's new, yeah. It's Some people may want to watch this. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I know, I know but we this don't, is, like, the first, like, ten minutes. <laughs> the first, like, ten minutes of it. It's, like... They're walking back from wherever, and um, they come across this, like, big carcass of, like, a moose or something. I forget what it was. A big animal. And they see sneakers, and they're like, oh, my God, those are your sneakers. And then they see a necklace in a tree, and they're like, oh, my God, you're dead. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm dead. How can you still see me? And blah, 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 blah. They go through this whole thing. So throughout the show, they're trying to figure out, like, how much time she has, has left before she ascends. And, like, okay. what kind of unfinished business she has left. So it's kind of almost like a... Beetlejuicy, kind of lovely yes. bones. Type, yes, yeah, purgatory deal. But then it also spins into like a high school type of like Mean Girls thing, yeah. where like she also doesn't have a lot of time left, so she's trying to then be the most popular girl because she's like, I have nothing left to lose because I'm dead. And that's yeah. So that's like another that's how a teenage spin on girl's it. Mind works. Right, right. So, <laughs> Rather than make amends and yes. let yeah. her family like, know I'm that she be loves the most them. popular yes. person <laughs> right. ever. Yes, it is. So then she, re- yeah, she befriends all uh, these good. bitches. It, it, it was funny. I yeah. thought it was good. Do they say boo bitch? They do. Oh, nice. How many they times? Uh, I'd say like a handful. Okay. Towards like the middle of the series. In case you forgot what the show is called, boo bitch. Boo no, bitch. Like, oh, yeah. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. So they pulled like a Family Guy where Peter Griffin has the thing where he laughs when they say the title of the movie in the actual movie itself. Oh, I don't think. I thought you were gonna say the one where he's 
was it Lando Griffin when he goes back to high school? <laughs> oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. That, I remember that one too. But there's one where like, it shows Peter like in the movie theater throughout various movies where he hears the title of the movie in the movie and he just goes, ah! It's like, yeah, we are in clear and present danger. And then the last one is, if this does not get resolved soon, I'm going to have to be Superman for the quest for peace. And he's like, that's where they got that from. Oh my God. So fucking so good. Superman for the, the quest. quest for peace. That's a good bit. Uh, I love that is Family a good Guy. Bit. Family Guy, I don't care what people say. I love Family yeah. Guy. Yeah. So, no, you, so you'd recommend Boo Bitch then? I thought it was good. Okay. It was a good little Netflix series. Like, pretty light. Good little Netflix series? Yeah. yeah. Uh, good little Netflix nice. uh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't watch it, I wouldn't four years watch now, it again, but it was a... How many episodes is it? I, it's not that long. Maybe like like half hour episodes? Eight or ten. It's eight like eight one season. Half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could blow through. A little rip through. Boo Bitch. Mike's going to watch that, that next weekend. Maybe I'll watch Boo See, that's something that I think Sarah would enjoy. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Well, hey. Different different, uh, different strokes for different folks, why correct? Don't, why don't you yeah. talk you, you were, like, teetering on it, so I, mm. I was like, I'll, yes. I'll let you sit. <laughs> why don't you talk about what we do in the Oh, it's great. I mean, what we do in the shadows, it's, it's awesome. Season, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah there's that. two episodes out or maybe a third one dropping tonight. Oh, they come out it's week very by funny. week. Yeah, it's weekly. I like so that. that it's, makes it it's a lot of days, though. Well, that's stressful for me. I feel like all the characters in that show are so great. Uh, and obviously, if you haven't seen season three, spoiler, go ahead, thirty seconds. But they obviously deal with the death of Colin Robinson and the Colin Robinson baby that comes back in season four. So that was a little <laughs> Colin Robinson, that's pretty funny. which uh, Laszlo is very adamant about not calling baby Colin Robinson, but the small Colin Robinson thing that came out of Colin Robinson's dead body. That's what he called it the entire time. No, it's it's, it's, it's hilarious, but essentially they're trying to open a vampire EDM nightclub now. It's It's like fucking, it's It's great. I do love that Kyle Newichek is attached to this show, who is Carl from Workaholics. Yes. Um, their podcast is very funny. This is important. I've, I've yeah, heard we'll that. Them a I, haven't, I haven't listened to that. But, uh, yeah, What We Do in the Shadows continues to hit on all cylinders, so check that out. I mean, I can't really go into too much depth on that. Um, we also have been diving, not horror, but diving balls deep into the show called The Bear, which is on Hulu. That's not a scary um, oh, yeah, It is the... fucking awesome. Yeah. And it's got, um, if you ever watched Shameless, the kid that played uh, Lip, Lip Gallagher. Uh, same kid. It's about a restaurant in Chicago, like a Chicago beef sandwich restaurant. It's like a half-hour dramedy type thing, and it's so dramedy. so. It reminds so me good. a lot of like uh, Atlanta. Have you watched it? No, not yet. Okay, yes. Yeah, so not, so not I, I actually have wise but that like vibe. I haven't yeah. seen Atlanta, but I've Atlanta's heard very good, good things. But yeah. it's the same thing where it's like a drama, but it's also like it's very f- the characters are just funny. Yeah. While the show is also very serious. Okay. Um, Atlanta's really good. You should definitely watch that. I've heard that from Wait, multiple. So I have a people. question. So Matt said that you were happy that. What we do in the shadows is weekly because it's less pressure. Yeah. So do you feel more pressure if all the episodes, like if an entire season gets released at once, yes. to watch all of them immediately? Because I'm not going to do that. And other people <laughs> do. do Everybody's that. talking so, about it yeah. all at once. Yeah. I I actually kind of understand what he's saying. Yeah. Not kind so of. I understand. My move though in the situation is I wait. I have one whole week to fucking take in 50 minutes of content. <laughs> See, I'd rather wait <laughs> See, rather than like, you know what I mean. Watch them all at once. No, because yeah. that's like 13 hours, and there's people that are gonna watch it all. In one city. Oh, it's yeah. not. Yeah. But that's a half hour show, right? No, was that longer? But I'm what? saying like there are what shows. Shadows? Shadows? Yeah, it's half hour. Yeah. yeah so no, so no. I was stressed out when I because when I started Yellow Jackets, I was like, uh, well, that's Gotta five finish. episodes yeah. back. So me and Sarah like we got luckily we both liked it right away. Right. And we got into it and we watched like three and then two the next day. And then we were like, all right, now we're on track. Dude, right. Yellow, Yellow so. Jackets was so dope. Yeah. Oh, but like, oh it's, it's nominated sorry. for an Emmy. I have one more thing to say, but you go ahead. But like sorry. Stranger Things is so, I, I, you loved it. Like the last, well, the but issue with so Stranger hard, Things so is that long. they're all fucking an hour and right. 40 minutes long. long. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like you can go and sit and down and I'm like, there's one. eight of them. Yeah. So I'm like, it's that's eight, that's eight movies that I have to just watch. And someone did that in one day. Right. And they're like, so what did you think? I'm like, buddy, like I have to go to work. Right. Some of us have jobs. Yeah. Somebody, somebody yeah. spent the day just sitting on the couch, yeah. pissing and shitting themselves, watching Stranger Things yeah. for 14 hours. That was right. Me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would love to do that. I ate George Ash three meals. And just yeah. Hey, speaking of Stranger Things, speaking of Yellow Jackets, I did not write this down for the news, but I feel like I kind of predicted the future a little bit last week because the Emmy nominations came out. Yeah. Stranger Things 
and Yellow Jackets were both nominated for Best Drama Series at the Emmys. Oh. And What We Do in the Shadows was nominated for Best uh, Comedy Series cool. at the Emmys. Seven. Seven. Wow. Seven. So, lots of horror Seven. representation, baby, <laughs> at the Emmys. Hell fuck. That's Didn't awesome. you want the Oscars, though? I wanted the Oscars, but I'll take the Emmys because it's been a lot of good horror TV. I mean, dude, Yellow Jackets getting nominated for Best Drama Series? That's Oscar fucking awesome. Yeah. And in addition to yeah. that, um, uh, they Chris, won't Chris, win. Christina Ricci, Unfortunately. Melanie Linsky, um, I think, and oh, Juliet Lewis. Uh, Juliet Lewis, I think, all got nominated for acting awards. Succession. They have them as a drama, huh? Su- unfortunately, Succession is going to fucking clean yeah, house. Yeah, Succession is going to clean house. But, I mean, just the fact they're all I mean, nominated. That is good. Pretty dope. Oh, it's, it? it's an HBO show. It's I've never seen an episode uh, of it, but I've heard it's very. I've good. seen a little, a few episodes here and there, and even out of context, I was like, "Wow, this is incredibly well done." Yeah, it seems so, like it's a well acted, yeah. well written show. Yeah. So. And what's the other one? The uh, the Euphoria. Oh, I haven't you, seen Cat, that. Cat, oh, Cat loves love Euphoria. Euphoria. Mm-hmm. Oh, what was that? Mo- what was that on? I think every drama, 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 drama series, oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah, yeah. that's heavy, nominated. It's, it is, but I've heard it's it's very good. Yeah. HBO doesn't fucking miss. Mm. They don't fuck around. No. All right, so we've been talking for a while. Ready to get to our uh, yes. topic du jour here? She. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. Well, here we go, folks. We're about to talk some shit here. Or are we going to talk some shit? Should Let's we see. not do a spoiler alert? Because this movie came out fucking three years ago. No, 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 no spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, like, it came no, out three yeah. years ago. Right. Well, so, yeah. we already did a podcast. Let, let, me, let, me, let me preface oh, here. Yeah. No, no, we didn't. We, we didn't. We were going to, but then we thought it was trash. Didn't we? didn't do it. No. No. We never did? Yeah, we didn't want to. We decided against it after we saw it. Why did I think we did? Because now we finally are. Because you don't remember episodes. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't so we're talking about midsummer. Mid, so, uh, you know, I'm gonna call it midsummer. This is I'm gonna our call first it midsummer. It is technically called Podcast midsummer. 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 All right. So we're talking. How many mid- times are you gonna ask that question? What, this is the first time we're podcasting. Yes. On yes. <laughs> yes. Cat. Yes. Yes. And yes. yes and uh, uh, yay. Yes. Oh. Yes. So we're talking about Ari Aster's 2019 no. film Midsummer, and um, I know that this is a movie that we've, <laughs> me, Cat, and Andrew have shit on pretty consistently since the inception but of this not podcast. In an entire podcast. No, throughout, throughout like the course of thirty episodes. That's correct. We I, I feel like we found time in many episodes to take a shit on Midsommar. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um Matt, on the other hand, has been a fan of this movie pretty much since day one, right? When you saw it. Saw it in theaters twice. Okay. Twice. twice. Okay, so we saw it wow. in theaters opening weekend. The three of us and Seth. I don't know how Seth got roped into that, by the way. He just asked him. Um, to draw the movie. And, and I think, sure. I think yeah, <laughs> we were like, this movie's gonna be awesome. I think the three of us were pretty stoned when we saw it. Uh, mm, I think we were. Debatable. Three years ago? Yeah, probably. Um anyway. I so we, we we've been wanting was. to we've been wanting to reevaluate this movie for a while. So here we go. Which will start right now and i will start if i could okay michael what are your thoughts and i'll start (laughs) i'll start and kat you can attest to this uh having been married to me for over five years now um i'll start by doing and saying something that i fucking hate to say and do and that is admitting that i was wrong admitting that i was wrong about midsommar it is in fact not a piece of shit it's a very well-made movie and I can say with thorough confidence that I enjoyed this movie much more upon a second viewing, uh, which was almost three years after the initial viewing, because again, we saw it in theaters opening weekend. I haven't watched a second of it since, and I really liked it way more the second time. I feel like my, uh, my guard was down a little bit. I wasn't expecting as much, and I was much more impressed with what I saw this second go through of this movie. Now, I know you guys might have varying opinions on this, but I'll just say I think it starts off with a bang, which I said at the time of the movie, but my initial opinion was that it never kind of replicated that initial first 20 minutes because it was so fucked up. Um, and But I think it really just consistently builds a strong sense of dread throughout the movie, which I think watching it a second time, knowing what was coming, I did kind of have like a knot in my stomach, like knowing what was coming because some of it's like so fucked up and obviously this is an Ari Aster movie the violence is insane it's an interesting story but I think ultimately the only thing that falls short for me is like the last half hour I laughed a lot at times where I think I was supposed to be ta- I was supposed to be taking things very seriously and I think you guys know the parts that I'm talking mm-hmm. about yeah. here um, but ultimately I, I understand more about how they arrived at this point I paid more attention to some of this stuff I was 
you know, open to more understanding of what the movie was actually about. And I also tried to watch this movie through the lens of what you were telling me about the fact that this isn't necessarily a movie about a girl consciously trying to kill her asshole boyfriend, who is an all-time asshole yeah, boyfriend, by the way. He's, He's the awful. fucking yeah, worst. He really sucks. Um, and maybe she's being tricked into this. And now I'm not necessarily sure that I buy that still, but I think it's an interesting way to look at it. And I think you mentioned that Astor mentioned this in an interview, correct? Um, there was a debate between him and Florence Pugh over which they thought it was. Okay. And had a different... Not necessarily said it in an interview, but she did. Mm-hmm. Um, that the, his view of making the movie was a different light than what she was giving while acting it. Okay. Okay. Fair. I'm I'm gonna let you guys all go. Yep. And then you I want to go because yeah. I'm gonna eat. I want to ask. Depending That's fine. on your answers, I want to ask you each some questions. So that okay. that I'll I'll stop there. I guess the central theme to quote Family Guy again here. The central theme of that rambling was that I was too hard on Midsommar upon first viewing, and I don't think this is a bad movie. I think it's nowhere near as good as uh, Hereditary, Ari Aster's first movie, but I think it's a worthy follow-up that's not that's not anywhere near as bad as I initially thought. Who'd like to go next? Andrew? Why not? <laughs> so this movie, Mid- Somar. <laughs> what to say, what to say. Um, I kind of agree with you, Mike. It's a beautifully shot movie. It's very well directed. It's very well written. It's not trash. It's kind of a ripoff, but in the same sense, it really isn't a ripoff of The Wicker Man. Um, there were parts, there, there were there were ideas in this movie that I really liked a lot. I just couldn't, for some reason, I just couldn't, I just couldn't take the actor seriously, and I don't know why. The girl. Like, her, mom, yeah. mostly, but like, for some reason, I just couldn't buy her. I just didn't buy it, which is upsetting because I really like the concept of the movie, and I like the idea of the movie, and I like the way it's done. You're talking about Florence Pugh. Yeah, I just, I just okay. couldn't. I didn't it's, buy. That's very like, interesting. I'm I didn't buy. Yeah. I don't. I don't buy anything she's doing. I don't buy what she's selling because I like the story. I uh, there's many as times her as I just, an actress or her just as the in character. This, just her character in this okay. movie. I just don't buy it. I don't. I don't. So maybe it's her as an actress too. Like it just doesn't come across as real. Like she's, and I feel like she did a pretty good job. But for some reason, I just, it's, I just laugh most of the movie. And maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm just fucking. You just me. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing about my, so my favorite thing. Well, let me answer. Yes. <laughs> so my favorite thing about the movie is kind of based off of what you said, um, like last week I think it was. But I love the way that they portray how a cult knows who to take advantage of. Like they kind of understand like people's backgrounds and they know that they manipulate people to do certain you want to do. Because to me, that's a hundred percent correct. Mm-hmm. They used. Her troubled past and background, whether they even knew it or not, I don't think they did. But they used that for her to like get her to. They really put a pin in that. By the way, yeah, Yeah. put a pin in that because there's something I'm going to bring up that comes with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Overall, I don't know. Not my favorite movie. Not the worst movie I've ever seen. It's like a six and a half. How many times have you guys watched this movie? Uh, So this is the second time I watched it throughout. Okay. I tried to watch it a second time, like a year after we saw it, because I'm like, this movie can't be that bad. And I lasted 15 minutes, and I was like, I can't fucking take her seriously. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Okay. And I don't know what it is. See, I, yeah, I'm surprised. I thought she was a strength of the movie, personally. I don't know. I, we just have differing opinions, but I thought yeah. she was good. Yeah. My turn? Cat. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, I feel like the first time that I saw this movie in the theater, I was very much focused on trying to figure out what was going on. Like, the entire time. Because I was just very confused with everything going on. Like the cult and the girl and her tragedy and the boyfriend and why is he treating her like crap and like there was just like so much going on that I was trying to put everything together to try to understand like what was going to happen next in a sense. No, did with... you notice the second time you watched it that the opening frame yes plays out the entire movie for you? No, what do you like the thing the curtains? I yeah, I kind of picked up on that. Yeah, just the it is literally a shot for shot play. In pictures of what happens uh, in the movie. Wait, you mean in that weird thing where they have the drawing? The, the drawing. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But at the very there's they walk by that. Right. But yeah. at the very beginning, before anything comes up on the screen, that's the first thing you see. And it's then it the, kind of like folds out like accordion wise. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I did see that. I didn't put that together. But yeah, yeah see, I'm still putting together the movie. Yeah. But. <laughs> but it, yeah, because it yeah. kind of like opens like a curtain right when the movie starts. Right. 
I noticed that, but I was like, why do they do that? I don't understand. But then I'm like, well, it's kind of an artsy film, and so I guess that that's, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I appreciate how it was shot. I appreciate the artistic, like the way that it, it's gorgeous. It's it's very nicely shot. It's a great movie. Um, and it's in that sense, and of like the landscaping and wherever I don't even know where they shot it, but landscape's beautiful. Uh, uh, Budapest. Budapest. They shot in Budapest. Okay. Yes, I saw that. It was yep. too expensive to shoot in My heart actual, in mm. actual <laughs> Sweden. The Grand Budapest Hotel. I, I love it, boys. I guess Sweden has very strict like work laws. Okay. So they were only okay. able to shoot eight hours a day. Where wow. in Budapest they were able to kind of like people were obviously they agreed to do it, mm. but right. they were able to get 10, 12, 14 hour That's good. shooting days. Yeah. But they also have a fucking shit ton of sunlight. Dude, this is yeah. kind of why I want to live in Sweden. Only eight hours a day, no more. <laughs> and awesome. yeah, and it's sunny out for fucking twenty two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> sounds, sounds pretty good. They get it yeah. right. Um, I like the acting. I liked Danny as a character. Um, I I liked the idea of the cult thing. I think the graphic pieces are okay. Like when they're like showing the guy's face and it's just like flopping all over the place. I'm like the effects. I don't know. See, I thought that was like, the nasty. Brought it home for me. I was shocking. like, oh my god, really good. Like yeah. it was yeah. shocking, but I like in 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 the same six sense as Andrew. Like when the second guy fell down, and all of a sudden you just hear like, <laughs> well, he just pencil dies. <laughs> like yeah. right, but then he's not dead, and then they go over. It. And I think maybe I like laughed because I'm just like uncomfortable. I don't really yeah. know, oh, but so I'm that's, just put like, put a pin in that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a thing that that'll touch back on one of your points mm-hmm. as well. Right. That mm-hmm. I guess I was just uncomfortable. But I I noticed a lot more the second time around. Like I was talking to Mike, and I said, you know, at the at the very end when they're in that teepee house triangle, the temple, temple. Yeah. <laughs> TV house, house, house triangle temple. <laughs> Sounds like a good kid show. <laughs> TV poo poo caca TV temple. And they do all of the, or even that before that, when they go into the house and they find the guy that's oh, the flowers and all the things. I said Flower. it reminded me of Han- Hannibal. Hannibal. Yes, it was very, Hannibal. Yep, okay, yep. I said true detective, but it wasn't because it was Hannibal where the guy says, This is my design, and he like says all the stuff with the. Do you know it's actually the, a, term, a term for that, by the way? What? Well, when they do that to somebody, where essentially they um, they're like decorating a dead body. They table. they like rip your back open and flay you and yeah. string you up by that, and then string you up by your lungs like through that. It's called a blood eagle. Blood eagle. That's yeah. What it is. yeah. Oh, Wild. Yeah. It's my favorite type of eagle. <laughs> um, but there were a lot of other undertones, like from Hannibal, with that kind of artistic decorating of like dead yeah. bodies and in a sense of honoring them, I guess, sure. in their sacrifice, ritual, tradition? Pagan cult Pagan tradition? Cult thing? Yep. I don't know. I don't know if they're honoring them. I don't really, I'm still kind of understanding what the, the whole tradition, I mean, I the know. traditional yeah, the thing. Like they're the u- using is. them as uh, compost, yeah. essentially. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever. Sacrif- they're sacrifices, yeah. they said, in the movie, right? Because they said nine sacrifices, and two voluntary, and then... So, Long story longer. Um, I think I liked it better the second time than I did the first time, just Good. because I feel well, like I you all did. Mm. absorbed more of it, knowing what was coming, being like, okay, I get that this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and then just seeing it a second time through, it makes me hear, it makes me hate the boyfriend even more. Right? Just, no, he sucks. <laughs> like he's just awful. And then like I think going through, because I just watched that show, The Girl from Plainville, mm. um, about the girl who. Oh. Um, to convince yeah. your boyfriend to commit suicide, suicide. Yeah. and then yeah. he did the whole he did the whole thing with the car thing too so all of a sudden I looked at that and I was like oh my god this is playing and then I felt so you know Fucked. the sister's yeah. bipolar and then she, the parents and it's just like and, and it's such like, like, oh like my a god, constructed yes like yes. planned out yeah. thing yeah. unbelievable yeah. that's why I, I said it, with, it starts out with a man it's, it's messed up it's messed yeah. up yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was like and then, like, she, the boyfriend's going over, and he just has this, like, face, like, sitting there. Yeah, she, he's like, yeah. oh, my God. But yeah. he's like, I was about to break up with this chick. Right. Yeah. But that's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's that's like, one of the things I see in his face is he's like, now, how do I What do I do? This? What do I yeah. do? Right, yeah. right. But in the same sense, like, he's still an asshole. Like, a, a yeah. complete asshole. And the oh, minute, he's just such a piece of shit. The one minute that yeah. she turns and looks at him being like, you would do something like that. Then oh, he's that was like, such a great call. He's yeah. like, what do you mean? Yeah. And I want to be like, what do you mean? What does she yeah. mean? Like you're such a dick to her. Yeah. Like <laughs> one thing I'll say before we let Matt talk here, because I know we've been talking talking for a little bit. You guys kept uh, we we talked a lot about how like how beautiful it is to look at and how beautifully shot it is, and everything yeah. takes place in daylight. I think that there's something to be said about the fact that this movie takes place almost completely in pure daylight and sunlight, 
and it's still as effective as it is in its scares and building of dread and I at least for me yeah. it was. I think that was impressive. An impressive feat of directing by Ari Aster. So. Yeah. I can only think of one other movie that's ever done that. Sound of Music. Texas James. <laughs> <laughs> Sound of Music. Interesting that you said that because I was in my mind being like it was kind of like the Wicker Man with the Sound of Music. Oh yeah, Wicker Man too actually. Yeah, I should say the Wicker Man as well. <laughs> so this movie it's it's, it's too yeah. obvious to like cite the Wicker Man. It is but I, I don't think that it was like I, I wouldn't call this ripping off the Wicker Man, no. but I would call it a quite fucking delightful homage. Yes, a a a bend of the knee and a tip of the cap. Sure. See, I just yeah. find it scary. Well, I'm I have a lot to say about this movie. Sure. Okay. Why don't you uh, Why don't you go? You so have the talking stick. run it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the whole shtick. Let's so do bear it. Bear with me. This might be a minute. I'm excited so. to hear your opinion. I saw this movie the night it came out. It was a Thursday night, and it was me. And my roommate at the time and his girlfriend at the time and Sarah. And so Sarah had already came and saw a couple movies with me and my roommate. And had a lot of fun. She kind of fucked up. I don't like horror movies. <laughs> you can make me come see them. Anyway, we see Midsummer at the end of the movie. Everyone is just, there was, there was a mood going in and there was a very different mood coming out. Yeah. So the opening of this movie, I would say, is up there with easily one of the top five best cold opens to a movie I've ever ever seen in my life um it's extremely fucking sad it's extremely brutal the sister killing herself with the car uh running basically the carbon monoxide through the house with duct taped hoses that lead directly into her parents bedroom that's sealed off with duct tape and then duct taped directly to her own face um you see the sister danny the main character panicking knowing that something's going on she's firing off phone calls you don't really know. She's talking to the boyfriend. Meanwhile, the boyfriend's friends are like, dude, this chick fucking sucks. Like, she's always bugging you. Yada, yada, yada. You know that Danny, she's dealing with anxiety. You get that good close-up of her taking, uh, what is it? Uh, Ativan. Ativan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, calling her friend and being like, I don't think he loves me anymore. Yada, yada, yada. Then you get that second call to Chris. She calls him Christian in the movie. Did you weird. guys notice yeah, that? Yeah, weird, okay. right? Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. either way, so you get that second call, and he picks up, and you just hear that guttural, Wailing. like, yeah. no, 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 no. And I'm getting chills thinking about it right, right. now. Mm. Seeing that in theaters for the first time, so me, we all, we are all on edibles when we saw it. And <laughs> we were really high. It was like a good dose of an edible. It was probably like a 70 milligram deal. But in the same sense, it's a good movie to go. Yeah, we went in hard. Oh, fuck. It's a good and movie That changes go everything. It is. <laughs> I wish and I was that so <laughs> we were already there. Like, by the time this part was happening, I remember immediately feeling like this, like, lock up in my entire body. And of her guttural cries. And it was so much like Hereditary, where Tony Collette is screaming on the ground yeah. once the kid dies. And it's the same thing. It's like you're you're witnessing something you're not supposed to fucking see. And yeah. I said this about men when there was the argument in the kitchen and he hits her and he's like, I'm gonna kill myself. You're a fly on the wall to something that is so fucking intimate and personal and important. Though it's bad, it's important to these people. It's an incredibly pivotal, like pivotal point in this person, this character's life, and it's just not welcome to the public. Right. Think of the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Okay, Sh- shouldn't be seen. By no one else should see that, nope. right? And you're in that moment with them, and you have a fucking broad view, and it pans out to the snow coming down, and you just get those very dull little letters saying Midsommar. Yeah, yeah, yep. And it's just like, wow, what a fucking brilliant opening. It sets the tone for the fucking movie. So right off the bat, I was like, yes, I'm in it. This is it. They set up the story. He, They go to Sweden for this this festival to do their thesis. There's an internal battle with two of the buddies, Christian and, um, what's his name, uh... Oh, uh, John, J- something with a J. Uh, I'll look it up. Keep going. Johan? No. Um, <laughs> Johan. Well, there's Pele, there's was, Pele was like the Sweden kid. There's yeah. Mark. And then um, the black kid. I forget his name off the top of my He's head. He's from the, the Good Life. Yeah, Sarah yeah. loves that I show, too. too. And she was yeah, like, she watch she's the like, movie. I watched yeah. The Good Life, and now I'm like so rattled because I see this kid's face all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Josh. His Josh. Josh. Okay. Josh. And so they have their internal battle over the, their, their sharing the thesis. So they get to go there there's this 
scene where you have Florence Pugh learning that Christian's going without her, and they have this argument back there, and like the whole time, and especially the last time I was watching it, and the time before that, I would say, I've, I've seen this movie about a dozen times. I was going to say, how many times have you Yeah, watched? I watched it twice in theaters, and then probably ten times since it's came out. Wow. Um, impressive. Damn. And Florence Pugh is absolutely phenomenal. I would say she just as much deserved an Oscar for this as Tony Collette did for Hereditary. Her character is heartbreaking. It's so sad. And watching her just, she just constantly accepts defeat and is like, no, you're right. I was wrong. You took the words right out of my mouth. And like, listen, she, yeah, listen. She, she mm. just is like this. She just only cares about making everyone else happy, even though she just went through this fucked up situation with her family dying. Yeah. And so she ends up going over there, and there's this incredibly brilliant shot. And this was the second point in the movie that I was like, this movie's going to be absolutely incredible. I know what you're talking about. And they're driving in. So they get off the plane, they're driving in, and the camera does a complete 180 and goes upside down as they drive in where there's the big sign for the festival. And it's just a brilliant signification of just you are not where the fuck you think you... Mm -hmm. Like, your world is upside down. It's backwards that's not what i thought you were going to say also a great shot i also thought it was excellent when when danny goes to uh was it pelly's house whoever and they're all like he's like by the way i invited Mm -hmm. danny to sweden um she's not coming but i invited her just so you guys know and they're all like okay what the fuck and then turns out she is coming yeah and she sits down and she's talking to pelle and he's telling her i'm so happy that you're coming which obviously foreshadowing future Mm -hmm. events like, you know, I lost my parents, too. I'm so sorry to hear about it. And she kind of has, like, a panic attack. And then it And she gets up to yeah. leave, follows her into the bathroom, and all of a sudden the camera swaps around, and she's in the airplane bathroom yeah. immediately. That's another great That was a great dark, shot. Yeah. I thought I saw that. I noticed that, like, right away the second time we watched it. I was like, yeah. wow, that's brilliant transition. And it, that right. all it is is just that, like, there was never a chance for anything to not move too fast. Yeah. It was just it was a, such a brilliant way of just saying no one has fucking control at all. And so, and that's the same thing with the upside down. It's mm. like, you guys are just, uh, you, the, this is it. Mm-hmm. Like you have just entered what you're, you're now like your There's time, no your life, back now. the this time is... of your life is now in the gray. Yeah. Like you're, it's like you, you've already jumped off the building and now those three minutes before you hit the ground, that's what's left. Yeah. So you are now in this and that's it. So, they get in, they meet people, you know what I mean? And I'm glad you brought up Pele talking about his parents dying because that comes up again. And I didn't really think too much about it until this last time I watched it, but when he sits down with her after they do the ceremony where the people jump off the build, uh, or jump off the cliff, uh, the old woman and her, you brought up that you thought that the, the violence that came with that, what did you thought it like was like too much or like... No, I think that it's one of those things you knew that they were going to... Jump, jump off the cliff, yeah. but then just the little tiny like she sp- laughed splat <laughs> that you see like, right. and yeah. I was just like because oh, <laughs> like, it's just like you just watch it's like self park yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes yeah. exactly exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, that's, that's probably why I laughed because I was just like. It's just this little splat, and you're just like. You know what it kind of oh. remind me of? Expect it to be a little bit bigger, Dude. but it's not. When uh, what's what's the name that Butters goes by when he goes to the girl's sleep with Marjorie? Marjorie. 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 When he turns into Marjorie, Marjorie. and they throw the pig off. Yeah. The yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of want to remind like, the doctor, like grabs like it's like an artery. Sudden, He's uh, like, Butters mom's just like, yeah. like, didn't make it. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. He's yeah. gone. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't make it. But to me, so that that scene specifically, I remember reading about it, and when the lady hits her face off the rock, and it peels back, and her whole head opens up, mm. I guess he studied the way, he did this for Hereditary, too, mm-hmm. I guess he studied the way the human head is in, is affected by a certain impact. She was gross when... When well, that's the thing, and like he wanted to make up. it look as realistic as he could, right, yeah. and he was saying like that kind of impact would literally look like, just yeah. bust you the fuck open. Yeah. And then they have the hammer come down on the other dude. <sighs> so gross. She yeah. goes back after all of that, which is an incredible scene. You have the two other British characters who are freaking out. They're like, "What the fuck right. is going on?" Yeah. Like that's a, the red flag, and it's it's funny because you have American people who are so fucking used to just abhorrent violence right. that and like, oh. they don't question it but they're you have upset, people from the UK who are like, are, you've got to be fucking out of your mind and they immediately they want out 
And so these, the, but the Americans still have this kind of like, mm, well, let's see where this is going. Right. But it's just like, dude, that and was reality, insane. You, you like, just watch two people the kill the themselves. Fuck out of here. Right. Yeah. And so she goes back, and what you said with Pele talking about his family, he tells her that his parents died in a fire. And now, when you think about what happens at the end of the movie, you're like, oh my god, dude, his parents were to the two Sacrifice. volunteers. Yeah. yeah. And. It just, the last time I watched it, that was the first time I made that connection. And I was like, oh my God, dude. Like, and he's still there. And he just, he's just so embedded into what this is. Now, this brings up the big debate that I had initially with you guys was that are they just twisted or are they just hammering their brains with these fucking hallucinogenic drugs so constantly that their perception of what they're even doing is. Like, do they even realize what they're doing is the or fucking do they do problem? It to I think they're, they're I think they're taking damaged brains and riddling it with hallucinogenic drugs. That too. That causes this just euphoric. Like, I don't even give a fuck anymore. Like, what the worst things in my life that could ever possibly happen have already happened. Yeah. So I'm just gonna roll with it because it's just they don't yeah. even realize that what they're doing is bad yeah. anymore. I feel like that's what cults do. Yeah. Is they target. Yeah. certain people mm-hmm. and but as it goes like you said there's the laughing point later on in the movie mm-hmm. it plays out a whole bunch where there's <laughs> well, a character yeah, that yeah, is yeah, reaching yeah, out yeah, to yeah. Christian trying yeah. to get him to impregnate her mm-hmm. meanwhile Danny's getting pulled left and right trying to become the May mm-hmm. Queen not mm-hmm. that she knows that she's trying to but everyone is trying to make right. her that yep. they're feeding everybody fucking drugs left and right people are going missing they're going they're going to places they're not supposed to go and then you have the point where Christian yeah, is brought to, and he's having sex mm. with this girl. Yep. And everyone's kind of like with him and doing it with him and like pushing on him. You have all these like naked old women, and it's extremely bizarre. Incredible. And it's bizarre. easy to laugh at because you're like, what the fuck? But you're not laughing because, hey, this is the funniest movie I've ever seen. No, you're, you're laughing because what the fuck else are you saying? Right, right. right. Yeah. Sometimes when you're uncomfortable, you laugh. That's because it is such a fucking incredibly bizarre and disturbing scene. That your brain has to just be like, I have to just laugh. Yeah. Right. Because otherwise I'm going to sit here and I'm going to sweat because I'm going to be nervous about what I'm looking right. at Sometimes and the people when you're around me. And someone's what grandmother yeah. and this is happening. Right. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> Three things I want to talk about here since we, we just touched on all of them briefly. One, do you think was Christian raped in that scenario? Or was he a willing, I mean, was he a no. willing participant in that? I think that he was, he was drugged, drugged and he didn't know it. He, I don't think he was. He was, in, he was being. <laughs> I don't think pushed. He, he was in a position into her he, from behind. After he could have easily her, gotten out of that. He was not in a position. True. He was not in a position to mentally give a legal consent. strong consent. Right. right. So I, I, I while I, I think that it, it, that term is thrown around, it's a strong term to throw around. I don't know. I, I'm unclear on it, but it's something to think about. And it, that was one of the things like that was talked about after the movie was released was whether or not he was, that was like a, a comment on like male rape or not. I can see that. Yeah. Um, pressured rape. Oh, but very much Did pressured. Yeah, pressured. He was he under the influence he of drugs. Kind of led, uh, yeah, he pushed was, into he was, it. Drugs he might as well have been directly to uh, it. Given, yeah. given roofies and Viagra at the same yeah. time and just laid there and just, Hey, like, let's yeah. just reverse they, that. They, they, well, they know, could, like, that's the thing. They could have yeah, given him a drug that? with yeah. an aphrodisiac and everything. Right? There. Yeah, yeah but can we reverse that scene and then... He didn't know that that's what was in there. Like, Two more he things. He could see it, and then he didn't turn around. Because he was fucked up on drugs. See, I think there was a part of him that wanted it, though. But he took There was a part of him that wanted it, too. Because he took the drugs willingly, knowing that they were drugs. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's okay. No, it doesn't mean that it's okay. I'm just saying, like, it's a... It's a complicated thing. Oh in no, this I get that scenario. I'm saying Kat's saying that he wanted to take the drugs, so well, he, that's okay. Then. He did take. Them. I well, think pulling the drugs out of the entire movie, you lose a lot of. Oh, emotions. absolutely. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Of course. Um, second thing I would say: Did you guys find the fact that most of the other uh, non-cult characters were killed off-screen? Did you find that to be a detriment, or did you find that to make it more interesting? I found it to be incredibly horrific when you have them brought back later right i agree yeah i think when you're imagine it, you, your imagination can run wild with what you think is happening it's scarier than what you can see on yeah. screen so oh, i agree well you know you i know. thought actually a second viewing that was one of the the, the strongest things that i noticed well you see second. someone wearing mark's face that was fucked. so you know yeah. that okay someone has he's been skinned mm-hmm. 
when you have them all brought back later, and you see you get an incredibly horrific glimpse at the British girl being dragged out of the pond blue and yeah, swollen. That was yeah. gross. Really, really realistic yeah. looking like she just drowned and was left there. Yeah. And that was Oof. rough. And then, but having them all carted in at the end, where they're all full of fucking hay yeah. and flowers, yeah. I was like, that to me was where I myself was watching the movie being like, oh boy, like this needs, and the music mm. is just yeah. unrelenting. The music is very scary. I and think, it yeah. was, I, even me, there was a point that I was like, this has to, this movie has to stop. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. and, like, you also were on 70 milligrams. I was, I was high as shit, and I was, <laughs> but I, and I was watching it on the big screen, and we were really close to it, and you know what, I'm glad I saw it the way I did, because it really impacted me I in a, feel like an it's incredible a way. way to watch that movie. And I just know, I just remember feeling that, and I've never once in my life watched a movie where I was that anxious, and mm. that just physically fucking like pulled into this that I was gripping my chair and I was like this I was like it was like being on a fucking ride that yeah. you can you just not remind me of get Alien Encounters when I was like eight years old yes like, <laughs> well, yeah. so well could, could you imagine being one of those characters in that situation on that amount of drugs and just being like I can't get out of here. Yeah, I'm in the well, middle. Especially when you're of nowhere. Yeah, what am I gonna do right now? Well, I like, just killed myself. Going yeah. into the end of the movie, there was there was three points that, at each point, escalated what I was feeling more and more. And the first one was that when you see them cutting open the Baron. This is what this is actually. I'll paraphrase a quote that Sarah had, but she was like, "When I saw them cutting open the bear, I began to get extremely frightened because." I thought they were going to cut him open while he was I, I thought that too. Uh, and so time, she yeah. thought that that was kind of like a practice. And so at that point, she was like, this is not... She she was like, I was no longer... I didn't feel safe with what this director was giving to me <laughs> as a film that I was watching. It's a great call by her. She's not wrong at all. And that's <laughs> what it was. And dude, I... I I did feel bad, but at the same time, it's such an incredible story. As, as this was all coming to fruition at the end of the movie, I looked over, and she had white knuckles on both hands and just two streams of tears mm. okay. going down her face <laughs> and just <sighs> just deep breaths in and out. Mm. And I and felt that, terrible, but I was like, the movie's almost over. <laughs> right. Yeah. No way to see what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that, there was that point where you see that. You see Christian take this big huge blow in the face of like whatever the fuck drug yeah. they give him and then you see him carted out and so well kind of mashed it up is the second one where he's carted out and she picks hmm. who it's going to be and then you have the people that are the volunteers one of which hmm. is the guy that attacks mark for peeing on the ancestral tree yeah and then like pele's brother also interesting that they don't actually show her choosing who she chooses right? she just kind of like nods hmm. And it's like they don't really give her an option. Hmm. It's just like this is your option. Yeah. He's in a wheelchair, so he can fully understand and feel absolutely everything but around him, move. but he can't yeah. move. Wow. Or speak, that's that's the which most is, horrifying thing. Yeah. Ever. So job. this is why I was curious as to like why the last half was like the last half hour you said was not like great. Because to me, I was like, this is where the movie is the most fucking horrifying. The sex stuff, honestly, for me, I, it just yeah, sure, loses that's me. Weird. I, I, yeah, it's weird, but it's it, you know what? It just I think it has to happen. Yeah, for the story to kind of have because she catches him. Yeah, and without it's just that, so fucking strange. It's so strange, and like, yes, I get it. It's a cult. It's supposed to be weird, but it, like, it's, you, too, you are though. you are correct. I wish I feel like even just watching it for the second time. I didn't say I'm the sitting end of the there movie. watching it. No, but I'm, you said I'm like the last oh, half hour. No, that, there's, that, so no there's that one scene that's uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. okay. Him, him in the bear suit and getting lit up. And that so whole that's the thing. So this is, is awesome. This what is that? where the third piece that really was the full peak of what I was seeing, what I was feeling, and the fear that I had. You bring the people in, the two guys that sit down. You have him in the bear suit. It's covered in. You know what? It's exactly you know what's like the Wicker Man, yeah. where you see him get carted out, and you see this big fucking Wicker Man, and you see him, and he just goes, "Oh, oh, Jesus Christ!" Like mm. you <laughs> know, they're gonna put him in it. They're gonna mm. light him on fire. Yeah. And yeah. you know what the music for that was? Screaming fucking animals. And it was like this had that same vibe where. 
you bring them in, you know what's happening, and it's the music is so gorgeous. Everything is like there's like it's like it's a miracle that it's happening. The way it's shot, the way it sounds, the way it's all built up, and they bring the other people in and then they wheel in all their friends that they killed. They're there's no bodies to them. It's They're just their filled skin with straw. Yeah. filled with their with straw and flowers. And I was like, oh my fucking <laughs> God, dude. Mm. And that brought back your question of being like, did you care that you didn't see what happened to them? Because of that play out? Mm. No. No, I don't think so either. Because now I get to assume, like, I get to think just about yeah. that or what happened. It's just, and it's just like, I, that's up to my imagination, which makes it that much fucking scarier. Mm-hmm. One, the last thing that I, I did want to touch on real quick, too. Um, did you guys all notice upon your second viewing or multiple viewings that um, how much Pele knew what was going to happen from the very onset of the movie? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. He knew what was going on. That I was got something that, that I... the second time. It was almost like... I never like, picked up on like it the, the first plan. time. But like he, he was... I mean, even from the first time, he's sitting there with Danny on the couch like he knew what was going to happen. He knew... Look, he's constantly slithering in. I lost my family like you did, and I was taken in by this family. I'm so happy that you're coming. You're gonna love it so right. much. And yeah, now again, part of that cult you're manipulating here. the situation. And even like Matt, to your point, like there's the point. There's the point where he's like trying to, quote unquote, comfort her, and trying to like endear her more to the cult. And he like grabs her hand, and her reaction is still to be like after. All this fucked up shit that has happened. Christian could walk in right now. Like, girl, who gives a fuck what's going on? Like, do you know what's going on around you right now when you're concerned about your boyfriend walking in and one of his friends holding your hand? Are you out of your fucking mind? Well, there's the other thing. Get out of there! The the constant movement of everything around her. So when she's on drugs, you see these great visuals. Mm. And they're very realistic. And when she gets given the... Throughout the movie, she uh, comes... from the beginning until the end, it's just constantly her becoming more and more ingrained in the earth. It's when they first take the mushrooms, yep. she looks at her hand, she's got some grass coming up through it, and then she gets the big flower suit, and like everything, and like there's a scene where Pele kisses her, and the flowers on her crown are like fucking yep. going nuts, dude. So it's just like, it's like she like... like that Disney short. With like yeah, ex- it, is like, very, oh, it is very yep. Disney-like, yep. and I would give that a call back to... His short film Munchausen, oh, okay. which is very much Still played out that, like a way. Disney yeah. Pixar short before a movie, oh, okay. but it's in real life. It's very colorful and bright and just gorgeous. Um, you have yeah, and then you go into the end where she is just a face of in just flowers. flowers yeah. yeah, and you have the thing they start to burn it down, and you they give them this drug, the the two volunteers, and you see them just sitting there, just like kind of like very content. Until they're not not content, right. yeah. And like, oh, hey, it was just no pain. so <laughs> fucking scary to watch, dude. Yeah. Because it, you're you're in this point, especially this is how I felt. I was like, I'm at this point that I'm like, I don't know when this is gonna be over, and I don't know how much more I'm gonna be exposed to. Like, I'm not sure how much more of this inside view I'm going to keep seeing. Yeah. yeah. And so then you get pulled out. The music is blaringly fucking loud. Yeah, very loud. Especially in theaters. And oh, like, it was even louder in theaters. She's yeah. trying to get away. That. She's coughing because of all the smoke. And you're just watching him sit there just in the bear suit, just yeah. knowing that every, like, he, he would be running around on fire, screaming if he could. But yeah. he can't. Mm-hmm. can't. And it's just unbelievably fucking terrifying. Why was he the bear? Why was he in the band? Yeah. I guess that's just how the... the I didn't know if you knew, works. like, yeah. why. It's just the, that's how it works. Well, that was also... For the movie, that it makes sense. So, I, I don't know the meaning behind it, and we could... Them. I mean, I feel like we're we're at a long time here, but we could keep going forever. Um, they did actually, at one point at the beginning of the movie, uh, Danny is sitting on her bed, and behind her on the wall is a painting of a little girl petting a giant bear, like, on the snout. Which is very clearly. Wow, a, I did not uh, even. Yeah, that's that. a that's yeah. a flash forward to huh. to the okay. end of the movie. That's why I was I was looking for if there was some sort of reference. Or yeah. Like so that. actually, uh, so why don't we hit a couple of these things real quick before we wrap up because we're we're going long here again. 
Uh, but there's lots of foreshadowing in this movie. So, okay, here, here's what I was just talking about. But in Danny's apartment, there's a painting of a bear and a woman wearing a crown hanging over her bed. This is the painting called Stockars Bas by Swedish painter John Bauer, famous for his art based on Swedish folklore and mythological creatures. Foreshadows the end of the movie. Yeah. Throughout the film, Danny hallucinates the plant life interacting with her and growing into her. This foreshadows her eventual decision to join the community at the end of the film. Additionally, her interaction slash growth with plants gets more pronounced as the film progresses. Notable examples include the tuft of grass growing through her hand, the grass consuming her feet, the vines on her throne reacting to the movement of her arms, the flowers in her crown breathing in sync with her, and in the final scene, the dress and crown made entirely of flowers signaling her complete engulfment by the community at the end of the movie. And to me, that is also a signifying thing of her complete engulfment of yep. the drugs. Yeah. yeah. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot of... I mean, I, I, and again, there's a lot of, like, deeper meaning to this. A lot... It's just one of those movies that you could deep dive and do a podcast. We could probably talk about this movie for it's three like Mother. hours if we really wanted to. Mother's another I think one. we should do one. Of, <laughs> we, we should do a, We need to do an episode of it. It would suck yeah. because I'd have to rewatch it and I really don't want to. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I would rewatch that movie in a heartbeat. Um, I know we've talked a lot. We've talked about a few different 2019 movies. This would be the fourth one that we've talked about from this year uh, after Doctor Sleep, The Lighthouse, and Us, um, <laughs> which I still consider all to be better <laughs> than this movie, okay. in my opinion. I think Us, Doctor Sleep, and The Lighthouse are all better. Matt, I know you don't necessarily have as much love for The Lighthouse upon second viewings. So I would, upon read just everything in a while, I would go Us, Doctor Sleep, Midsummer, then The Lighthouse. Whoa! More yeah. than The Lighthouse, Andrew. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's I, I want to hate this movie so much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, as far as horror movies goes, it, I think it's better. Okay. Okay. It pains me to say that. Well, let me let me let me rip through. And obviously, some of these are silly. But let me rip through some of these movies and let no, me know if, if you. Rankings. What do you What do you think? Okay. What do you What do you rank? <laughs> like, what about me? You can. Um, I forget which one. What about me? <laughs> Us, Doctor Sleep, Lighthouse. The I didn't really like Doctor Sleep. Okay, The Lighthouse, <laughs> Us, Midsummer, or Midsummer. Us, Midsummer, Lighthouse. Okay. Doctor Sleep. Matt. Uh, Midsummer. Um, Doctor Sleep, Us, Lighthouse. Fair enough. Also, in twenty nine, you got. Three from Hell, not great. Gosh. Annabelle Comes Home, which I thought was actually pretty good. The terrible Black Christmas remake. Uh, I didn't even watch that one. Yeah. Brightburn. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. that. I not bad. Wanted to, but uh, the Child's Play remake with uh, Mark Hamill playing oh, Chucky. Terrible. God. Uh, Colorado Space with Nicolas Cage, the H.P. Lovecraft. Oh movie. yeah, that, that wasn't was bad. bad. I actually yeah. kind of liked, liked that it. Movie. Yep. Uh, it. Crawl, Andrew. Crawl. I mean, good movie. Crawl's good. Crawl movie. Cool. That's like five on this list. Overall, what I'm, what I'm getting at is good. Good year for horror. Awesome. Well, that's actually, we'll, and we'll, slap, we'll we'll wrap on this slap. note because we're we're at like an hour and a half. Here. I do want to say one more thing. Yes. Just <laughs> while we're on. Yes. I do want to say Midsummer for me. Mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, is one of the most important horror movies that's come out ever. In I can terms, appreciate that. Uh, I know how much you love it, and I don't think there's been something as impactful in terms of folklore since The Wicker Man. Okay. So I I think that this was a absolutely fucking fantastic. I think that your passion for this movie has shown through in this episode, and honestly, I can see it in Andrew, too. I feel like it's made me like this movie a little bit more, yeah. hearing so. you describe yeah. the reasons why you like this movie so much. I'm not kissing your ass. I, that's no. just kind of how I, I feel. I also just now think that I feel now, like now I want to watch this movie, like, absolutely fucking bamboozled. Because, <laughs> <laughs> <Sure. laughs> like, I do like five milligrams of weed. I'm high. Seventy milligrams. Like I, I would be, be, oh, be dancing. This, I would be this fucking before, lighting myself on fire. This well before I had a kid. <laughs> no, no, I have no kids, so I can easily um, just, just lock my door in my let apartment. Someone know you know what was that. not one of the most important <laughs> horror movies of the last several years? Uh, the Curse of La Llorona, which was a terrible yeah, Conjuring Universe shit. movie. Uh, <laughs> Happy Death Day to You also came out in 2019. It was a solid it was movie. Okay. I like that movie. Uh, we also got Haunt, one of Kat's favorites. I like Haunt. Good movie. Shutter. Good movie. Uh, terrible Joe Hill and Stephen King adaptation in the Tall Grass. Not great. Yeah. Sorry, I will die on the hill that kind it of a whack story anyway. Yeah, it's not great. Not no. great. Um, I will die on the hill that it chapter two is nowhere near as bad of a movie as people paint it out to be. But that's a conversation for another. Who said day. that was a bad movie. Uh, I feel like it's hated by most people because uh, see, I would so I think I think that it chapter two is I won't say it's trash, but I feel like me and you are like flip flop 
with Midsummer and It Chapter Two, or like both mm-hmm. of you guys. Like, well, no, I, I feel like it's a It Chapter movie. Two. I came out of the theater and I was like, that was fucking good. Mm. Mm. So. I love, the, but then I watched. It again I love the I cosmic like, elements to it. I love like the weirdness. Fine. I love the monsters. So that's, but again, that's my taste. To me, you know what a, I did to love me it's a movie it? that I forget the Patrick about. Yeah, I was gonna say, Patrick Hawks stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the Chinese yeah. restaurant scene was awesome. Yeah. The Paul Bunyan yeah. part, I thought the, I, I loved. The comedic Sorry. parts of that movie are awesome. Bill Hader, it's a very great. easy movie to forget about, though. Yeah, it is. It is. So we'll revisit that at some point. We should actually do at one point before the summer ends because I feel like they're summer movies. We should do it. It Chapter 2 before the summer. I'm down, dude. Okay. Can we just do it in one episode? Would, would have been in that? <laughs> um, also, um, underrated Netflix horror movie, The Perfection. Did well, anybody see that? Oh. Okay, good. Love that. Very, movie. very good. Got um, Allison Williams from Get yeah, Out. That movie's fun. Check it out. So check it check out. It. Uh, you know, it was not a good movie. <laughs> the Pet Cemetery remake, that movie smelled. Oh, oh my God, stunk out loud. A great movie that I drafted in my 2010 draft, Ready or Not. Fantastic. Oh, that's a good fan- movie. Fantastic. I don't Just think I ever saw that movie. Fantastic. Like you should it. watch it. Uh, really like it. I don't know if I'm ready, though. Saint Maud came oh, out in 2019. Saint Maud. Saint Maud. I didn't see it until mm-hmm. fucking 2021. That was 2019. But it did come out in okay. 2019. Uh, we also got uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark in 2019, I I which I good. liked. Yeah. Uh, a movie called Sweetheart, which I believe is on Netflix, which I like. That's a creature feature, aquatic monster Worms. movie. Uh, and a smelly movie uh, called Velvet Buzzsaw, which I like uh, that starred movie. Jake Gyllenhaal. I was not a fan. I, liked I didn't movie. see it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty good. I heard so, it was bad, so yeah. I didn't watch it. I didn't, think, I didn't think it was terrible. The you normal know movie I liked better was Nocturnal Anna that he was in. Was yeah, you like weird I like Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is very awesome. good. Yes, I do like weird movies. That's you do like strange movies. You're not, you're not wrong. 2019 had a lot of movies that I heard were bad, and I didn't watch them because mm-hmm. that was when I was being more of a kind of a stickler, and now I just kind of watch everything. Mm-hmm. All right. Just so I can say yeah, it. Literally, I'll watch trash on trash on trash. Yeah, trash on trash on trash. All right, guys. Trash. <laughs> uh, well, I am, um, I'm happy to know that we can evolve as human beings. We can change our opinions. We can think different thoughts about movies that we used to think were steaming hot piles of garbage when it turns out they actually never were those things in the first place. So I'm very proud of us all for changing our I'm opinions. I'm not proud. I kind of very to varying degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, thank you for enlightening us on this. Of course. Um, I hope that uh, it wasn't too, like, rambly. No, of ridiculous. course not. No, this was interesting. So I, I, had a lot of I went into this and I went, this is a Mike, I mean, mm-hmm. a Matt episode. I'm like, let's just let him. I had I had a lot waiting. to say, dude. I've, I Like you said, I am passionate about this movie. And you are. It comes it, through. It impacted me so much when I first saw it. And yeah. that's well, I why. I wish I saw it with you. Dude, it was just. It was. High as fuck. I really do think that if you can watch it and you can sit down and you can really take it in for what it is, at least like the way I interpreted it, like you can interpret it in different ways, but try and think of it that no one has fucking control of what they're doing. Mm. And it just makes it that much. It's like life. Fair more enough. Times. Okay. And that again is Midsommar, directed, uh, written and directed Midsummer. by Ari Aster, or Midsummer, whichever you want to do, Ari. if you want to do the American uh, pronunciation. Uh, you can find that streaming on Showtime right now. I rented it's, it's it on, on, I think it's on Amazon Prime, too. YouTube. It, is it on very Amazon well may Prime, have been. I think I paid $2.99 for it. I can't remember. Right. Did I, did, I, I paid for it as well. Which yep. is fine. But anywho, uh, just a reminder that you can find our show wherever you're listening right now, but it's also on Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, and wherever else you may get your podcasts. And also a reminder to, uh, hey, go to the Fangoria shop and use the promo code uh, Hometown Horror Pod for 20% off. Get yourself a of subscription. Your next thing. Get a subscription. Get some merch. Get in on the and, details. Uh, Still watch let the let movies that do. they produce because they smell. Well, well, no, watch the movies. Watch, watch the movies. Watch the movies. All right. Well, this has been another episode of America's Hometown Horror Podcast. My name is Mike. I've been joined by my lovely, esteemed, intelligent, and beautiful wow. co-hosts, Catherine, Andrew, and Matt. Say good evening. Oh, I'm beautiful. Good Thank evening. You. Good evening. Love you. Adios, muchachos. Andrew, go urinate. Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror and just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show because of course we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus and Old Colony Cast, head on over and give them a listen.